Hello, my fellow gnomes. Welcome back to another video. So we're back indoors, or as the game is now called, Gnome Hotel. It's just launched a couple of days ago, so thanks to everyone who's checked out the game so far for what is a pretty minimal demo product. There's actually been quite a bit of enthusiasm for this thing, more than I expected to be honest, so I might do a few more updates to this game. Now, as I said in the last video, there is definitely a couple of bugs and testing that needs to happen, but that's the benefit of having all of you folk as my fellow gnomes. So we've had loads of bug reports coming in, and I thought we'd do something a little bit different today. I often get lots of questions about helping people fix the bugs in their games, so I thought for once I'd put myself in the hot seat and sort of show you how I get the reports, how I work my way through them, and try and fix some of them. Now, one of the bugs being reported to me was that you could pick up things multiple times if you did it fast enough. Now, this confused me because if I go for this coin and I start spamming, well, I can only get it the one time, right? And, you know, if only you can pick up multiple keys this way too, and I was kept trying to do this, I kept trying to see maybe there was some technique to it, you know, I really thought maybe I could use an auto click or something, but I, I couldn't get it to pick up multiple times. Um, but if you go into the studio settings, and let's say we add a replication lag of just half a second. Because when we're in the studio, we've got the beauty of perfect network speed. And now if I go to the door, you can see there's a bit of a delay. And now if I find this coin and I start spamming it, you can see I've got half a second to press it as many times as I can, so I managed to get six coins. So sometimes uh, fixing the bugs is as much about finding out how, how to recreate them. And so if we find the, the key, here it is, and again I spam it, then I'm going to get a bunch of keys that I'm all holding at the same time. Now the fix of this is super easy. All I had to do is add in this one line onto the prompt.triggered, uh, where I say, if we've disabled the prompt, then don't allow it to keep being triggered. And so this just handles that little delay, and you can now see if I play again, and I go through the door, and I do the same thing with the coin. I'm spamming it, but I've only got the one coin, and I can only get the one key. Cool. So it's just been pointed out to me in the Discord that this is missing uh, the second stand on the lamp. But what's brilliant about this is it's not all of them, because some of them have it, and some of them don't. So I've now got to go, and this is floating slightly as well, I'm going to go make my way around and check all of these. I think it's just the hub world, um, but maybe it's the rooms itself. No idea. I don't know how this even happened. I guess I was just deleting some stuff, and I must have deleted that by mistake. But now I've got to find each one and drag this over like so. Go and check all of these then. Here's one. And after all this, I probably still missed some. And there's another. And guilty. Just one. Always just one in each room. Why is that? And again, just one. Just one. So this one's an easy fix really, but when you're in this area with the gnome, you have this speed boost on which enables you to move a lot faster. But if you die at some point during this, oh no, what a terrible shame, and you then go to revive yourself, what's going to happen is you're going to spawn back in, but you're going to be at a slow speed, which means there's a very high probability that you're going to end up getting killed by the gnome. So this one's a pretty easy fix, like I say, because I just changed some of the logic a little bit, because before I was doing my teleportation kind of inside every function, 
which was allowing for a lot of mistakes to seep in. Whereas instead, now I'm not doing that. I'm just using this teleport to room function. And this I'm kind of handling everything from here. So if it's a specific room, right? So the end room is the only one really where you're able to respawn in time. Uh, with the bacon, if you respawn, um, it's going to be by the time the bacon's already finished the chase sequence. But we set the speed boost. And uh, if we're teleporting them, such as they're in a closet or something, then we're going to reset the walk speed as well. But by having all of the teleport to room logic all in one place, it allows us to have more of an oversight and hopefully have less mistakes where we've got one teleport happening down here and another one happening up here, say, and it's not quite gelling together. And now for the game of gaps. There's a gap here, apparently. I've no idea where this is. This could be anywhere. And there's another one here around the corner. So I've managed to narrow it down. I found one that is right here. There we go. Snap that in. But the other one, I really can't place. I mean, it, it just looks like a room in the hotel. Every room looks like that. Every wall has the same pattern. It's like some sort of weird round of geoguesser trying to figure out which wall it is that's missing. The very corner. Is it this one? Nope, looking at a corner here. Looking at a corner here. That all looks fine. Oh no, there's the gap. We found it. We found the gap. Treasure hunt complete. Most underwhelming treasure hunt of all time, but there we go. Oh no, he's running so fast. <laughs> so another problem we have is if you're just underneath an object and you try to come up, you will get a bit stuck, which in the worst case scenario can actually cause you to glitch through the world. Whoopsie. Uh-oh. So this one's actually a little bit hard to replicate. So I've actually added in um, a different character. This ugly thing is a little bit taller, which makes it a little bit easier to time. And I made these uh, colored and got rid of their transparency so I can see what's going on with the root part. And basically, I disable the collision so you can move through these fine. Ordinarily, it would collide. But then if you're under here and I disable the collisions, then it's going to get trapped. And then you end up in this situation where you're pretty stuck. And if you start spamming it, then you end up glitching through the floor. So as a workaround, I've created this can stand function. And I'm just doing a little raycast from the root part and the head position, just raycasting up three studs. And if we find an object, then we're not going to allow them to crawl. So I'll show you what that looks like with the bigger character again. If we're crawling and we say head, we stick our head underneath this chair and I try and uh, get out of my crawling position, I'm not actually going to be able to do anything. And he's stuck in the chair, but if he moves out the way, then he can get back upright again, which now means that if we're crawling and we go under here, doesn't matter how much we spam the key, we're not going to be able to get up again until both our head and our root part is fully free. So that should really disable uh, all the issues we're having. It's possible there's still some edge cases where we could like have the root part partly under and still be able to get up, and then maybe that would cause some kind of issue. But uh, really, I think this is going to fix 99% of the problems. So we can go ahead and put this transparency back and put it to the proper character. So this issue with the doors is all to do with if you exit it and start walking backwards at the same time, you get pushed in and then you are trapped. Now, you remember we actually have this barrier part. So if I set this to half transparency, uh, this one is actually stopping us from moving into it, regardless of where the doors are. But because our doors both have collisions on them, uh, they're actually pushing us through this part. It's essentially just a physics glitch. So if I get my template closet and set the collisions on those doors to false, now when I try and do my little walking back glitch, I can't because I can't actually move through those doors. There's no collisions with them, nothing to fling me back through. Now, I am still able to crouch while I'm inside here, which is a bit weird. You can be crouching and moving around and then jumping. 
So even though we set our walk speed uh, to zero, as soon as I enable crouching, it disables that movement. So in order to fix that, I've just set up um, a little is hiding attribute of the character. And then I can just check if character get attribute hiding. If that is true, then we will turn and exit out of here. And voila, no more crouching or jumping for me. Sometimes on mobile, this crouch button doesn't actually appear. So you're supposed to get this little button, which you can then toggle as you desire. And apparently when you crouch, you can't even get over the door frame. That's a bit sad, isn't it? Um, so why is this? Well, at the moment, we're just relying on a very basic uh, user input service, checking if touch is enabled as soon as the script runs. And I suspect this isn't really ideal because maybe the script is running um, before this has actually been verified. And also, it's possible that a player could be on a device that might have touch enabled, but they might not necessarily uh, want to have that touchscreen button visible. So now a slightly improved method, we're not going to rely on a single if statement, um, but now we're hooking into the last input type changed event, so we can react a bit more dynamically every time the input changes. We're going to check if it's gamepad, keyboard, or on the touchscreen. I'll just show you if I click play inside of the emulator. Um, it sometimes breaks my mouse a bit, but you can see if I'm moving around with my keyboard, nothing happens. And then when I start moving around using the touchpad, it appears, use the keyboard, it disappears. But of course, the most important bug of all, the unanchored box. Dun, dun, dun. So I think this is just because in the actual game, these things all, um, they get welded to the surfaces where they don't hear. So let's go and anchor them. Yeah! 